Rashford really seems to have ticked well, on. Well, both since... really. I mean, Pogba, Pogba was the uh, the butt of all the, the the sort of criticisms, and he was the, he was the headline maker, good or bad, and his performances were were abject at best. Uh, but clearly, we're seeing a much better Paul Pogba, and so we should be for the talent he's got. But you know, the lads here have been pretty critical of. Uh, uh, Lukaku for a, for a while, mm. and uh, you know I, I think it's understandable that, that Rashford, with his pace, is certainly a better option, um, and it's proven that. And listen, United, that this run that they've been on is, is just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Fair, fair play to them. They didn't play great today, but they got the job done. You look at Marcus Rashford, the other part of that equation, uh, and it's a player that, if you just look at the game today you know how confident he is as a player. Because the truth of the matter is that had he been managed today by Jose Mourinho, after he missed that early chance, he doesn't take that second chance the way that he did with that level of confidence, bringing that ball down, second touch, and see you guys later, take care, one nothing. Those chances used to pile up under Mourinho. Once you miss one, then you think about the next one, you think about the next one, now all of a, all of a sudden it's a mess. Now, you see a player that, okay, I missed an opportunity. Now I'm looking forward to the next one. I'm looking ahead. I'm, I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to get another chance, and I'm going to take it cleanly, and he did that. And you can say that across the board about Manchester United. So it's not a coincidence that you see a team that, even though they didn't play all that well today, they did enough to win in a place that hasn't been easy for them and against a team that, oh, by the way, has been playing well in Leicester City. So it's the three points that are valuable to Manchester United, and again, they keep playing well, there's a level of confidence here, and they're enjoying what they're doing. I'm buying Karim Benzema, and I'm buying that this team now sort of has an idea as to what they want to do on the field, but I am not buying the full turnaround because I still think this team is going to give opportunities and it's going to give chances. Even when they're winning games, they're, they don't seem to be controlling the games in areas in which they have been dominant in the past. And when Luka Modric and Toni Kroos are playing together, you think that that'd be good enough to run the midfield. That doesn't happen with consistency. They're, they're not getting enough good performances from guys that they were counting on, mainly a guy like Gareth Bale. And until he doesn't get himself right, then you're going to depend on Vinicius and Benzema to get the job done. I'm not sure that that's enough at the bigger stage. Since you mentioned Gareth Bale, mm. as he comes off, he gets the whistles. I mean, things are going from bad to worse for this guy in Madrid. I hope he's just got... Selective hearing, or <laughs> I mean, I don't know. He's, is it fair? Sorry, is it fair? He just seems to be the one that mm. quite a lot gets the criticism. And if he doesn't play well, he doesn't. He doesn't play well. I've always felt that he's maybe they feel he hasn't integrated in to the whole Spanish way of life and blah blah blah. I don't know. But the, the good thing is for Real Madrid, there are still some flaws there. Uh, Bale can get better and probably will get better on the big stage. But when Benzema's in form, mm -hmm. as he is, and he's been mal much maligned as well, by yeah. the way, from the crowd and, and the media, to be fair, uh, at least you give yourself a chance. And so, uh, you know, there's problems at the other end. We know that. They will give up chances, as Ali said. But at least now they're, you know, they're creating chances and they're putting the chances away. They're eight points behind in the league, which is, you know, it's going to be too big, a, uh, too big to breach. But we know they come good in the Champions League and you know, they're not in as good a shape as they've been in the last uh, two or three years when they've won it, but they're in better shape than they were two months ago. We know that for sure. Unai Emery, was he a bit too aggressive in his setup, especially considering the opponent, Manchester City? No, I don't think so, because I think if you just go there and, and set up to defend, you're just, you're just a sitting duck. Mm. Uh, what, what cost them was, was basic errors, mm. you know, particularly it will be. I mean, you go to Man City, you, you in the dressing room as a player, the first thing you're saying to each other is, listen guys, you know, we do the basics well, we keep it tight. The old saying in football has always been, you keep it tight for the first 15, 20 minutes, you frustrate the crowd, and you make a mistake like they did uh, so early on, then, then it's difficult. He tried to get his two front men into the game, uh, but what happened was, you know, Guendouzi and Torreira, they didn't have bad games, but they got swamped in the middle of the park, and Lichsteiner well, he got caught out every time, but that's no surprise. He's the weak link in that, in that defence. Yeah, Manchester City found matchups that they loved. And on the outside, there were moments in which was uh, Kevin De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva, one of them getting on the inside shoulder of Nacho Monreal, the other one running in behind interchangeably, 
And they did that time and time again, getting on the wrong side of Guendouzi. And so Guendouzi is late tracking back. Nacho Monreal is late tracking back because he's checking to the ball and, and, and trying to step to it. And in doing so, they leave space in behind. Now, you think that that would just be on that side. It was happening the same way on the other side between David Silva and Raheem Sterling, which led again to the Raheem Sterling, uh, Sergio Aguero second goal. It was an assist by Raheem Sterling from him running in behind. Those matchups simply exposed Arsenal because they were trying to keep things in the middle. Now everything was open in the outside. They brought themselves to the outside. Now everything was open in the middle. They were late tracking to the ball in the middle. They were late tracking to the ball on the outside. And Manchester City simply dominated. Uh, Arsenal, I think the 3-1 doesn't really tell the story of how this game was dominated by Manchester City. There was a moment there in the first half, maybe 10, 15 minutes, where Arsenal were part of the game. After that, none of Arsenal, everything Manchester City. Welcome into this Super Bowl Sunday edition of Extra Time here on ESPN FC. Craig, what's that? Ale, and hey, <laughs> this guy here. Uh, we got a lot of questions to get to, so let's jump right into it. Okay. Uh, this was actually from earlier in the week. Uh -huh. Sepp wants to know any sympathy for that 7 1 Roma loss? After all, their president is a fan of the show, and it's addressed <laughs> to you, Ale. <laughs> uh, you make some sympathy. <laughs> Not really, but. We've been telling you this, and apparently when we sit here and we tell you that your team can't defend, people get a little defensive and touchy and sensitive, but when you lose 7-1, to one, maybe, maybe that gives you an idea that defensively you have some problems. Certainly yeah, more data. Mr. Pelota, the uh, mm -hmm. owner of Roma, he was okay about it in the end, I think, but he was, you know, he's tongue-in-cheek, wanted yeah. to come on the show. He, and he didn't. And he was offered the opportunity to come on, and he, he didn't want to come on. Most people we offered the opportunity. Anybody can come on. There's we, a lot of people who have opinions about this show, and, and then when they have the opportunity to come on, they don't come and on. Like, we, come on, then we'll come on and we'll have that, and we'll. Uh, yeah. Three point. Uh, there's some people. Oh, well, you you know people. <laughs> there's some people. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, Champions League final or Super Bowl? Cigar wants to know. I think it's pretty obvious for this table. Yeah. Uh, what position do you suppose you'd play if you were an American football player? Hmm. Kicker. Nah, come on, other than kicker. Give me something else more creative. You could, you could be like a tight yeah, end. Yeah, tight end. You could ask. bulk up and be a tight end. No, stay the on it. Are you a good runner, right? No. All right, okay. I'm run like the Gronk. Well, there you go. Yeah, right? He's a tight end. Heavy footed. Oh, but he's a tight end. I would say. I don't know. I'd love to be a linebacker, to be honest. Yeah? yeah? What's a linebacker? That's the one that lights everybody up, the guy that kind of per patrols the middle. I like to hit people. Safety. Would, would be I'd nice. be a safety. <laughs> and then I just stand there. All right, get your job, boys. Champions League final or Super Bowl, which would you rather uh, attend? Do, attend. Is, do if, the least you can for the most amount of money you can. <laughs> that's the punter. The punters, they don't even practice. Well, that's uh, sad. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on for all those gigs. Those gigs are great. Mm -hmm. But if you screw up once, less, and you're gone. Less for more. Yeah. Uh, if, if the Cowboys are playing, I would take the Super okay. Bowl. If not, then Champions League. The yeah, Champions League final is, is huge, but I mean, Super Bowl, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a pretty exciting event. You may have noticed. Both events are criticized because they're a little corporate in terms of like the fans that show up. Right. So you don't have that like home ground feel. But I'd probably pick, I'd probably pick Champions League. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you for caring right, about yeah. my answer. I'll Champions League <laughs> final or uh, uh, a League IMX game. Liga MX final. Well, who's playing in the Liga MX game? <laughs> America. Oh, Dan, I'm there, man. I'm there at Azteca. No, I would go to Champions League Champions final. League final. I've seen America. All right, here's I one. Champions, Champions League, League, League final. final or Gold Cup final when the U.S. US play. Mexico. Mexico, U.S. Gold yeah. Cup final? Oh, I'll go to that. Uh, it's, just, it's so big, isn't it? No, just it's so that's big. More, the Gold Cup. Oh, I got oh, it. You can't even have your own set of interests on this show. What a competition. Just follow in line like everybody Do you remember else. when you and Hert went to the Gold Cup? <laughs> Is this a line? in Santa Clara. What? Yeah, the and final. I was leaving Santa Clara, thankfully. You didn't come visit us. You were in Santa Clara when we were there, and you didn't well, stop uh, by. To... You, you were busy with your. Uh, yeah, we could have got your, you an extra ticket to the game. You know. Butler, Herc. <laughs> up right. to, I don't know what you were up to. I couldn't wait to get out of there. We the Gold Cup. Was what were you on. doing? What were you doing in Santa I was Clara? Covering an ICC ah. uh, friendly, and then you were going to another friendly. It was called That's the Gold true. Cup final. Right. <laughs> oh, that was actually that last Gold Cup was terrible. It was kind of everybody's beat. And they beat Jamaica in the final. They did. What they was did. It? Uh, oh, let's move on then. Whoa. Danny wants to wow. know, Ale, you're finally showing love. This isn't a question, it's a comment. Ale is finally showing love for Manchester United. They've been playing well. Yeah. See, this is how it works. And it goes back to the initial question. Mm -hmm. 
If your team allows seven goals, you cannot come on and tell me that you're good defensively. If your team is winning a bunch of games, then we'll sit here and tell you that your team is doing really well. Huh? It's not, it's not rocket science. It's not open heart surgery that we do over here. DB wants to know. Now, have you, you ever... would, would, you want, would you want Steven Nichols doing open heart surgery? No. No. I would not. He'd have his shots on. No. Have a uh, is there electricity and technology involved in open heart surgery? <laughs> so no, he'd, he'd, he'd not. have his shots on. He'd, he'd have a can of beer in one hand. He'd, have a, he'd definitely have a cigarette. And he'd be going, right, where's the patient? <laughs> gloves. Gloves. Yeah, yeah. The idea of Stevie in surgical gear is. Uh... Look at you. And he's got a plate of uh, potatoes and mints. Right. Eleanor's there cooking up some She's food cooking. in the back. Yeah. Full She's Scottish kitchen. The dogs go. are running around in, in the surgery. Super Mario Kart. There's a cat. In the There's corner. definitely a cat. Patience on fire. All right, uh, DBPINFL wants to know Have you ever been traded or transferred to a team and you thought the players on that team were not very good? It looked like Dennis Suarez was thinking that today. <laughs> yes. Well, yes is the answer. Yes. You want to name team names? I don't know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, when I left Celtic, to, when I went to Chelsea, when I left Chelsea to go to Celtic, I went to I left some very good players to go to some very good players, and then when I left to go to Derby, things took a downturn. Mm. There's a but reason you... they were second bottom of the league when I went there. Well, we stayed up for two years, but it was tough. I gotta tell you. So whenever I was traded to Chile, as USA, right? So. I had just come from winning MLS Cup and been fortunate enough to win three of those in my career. I'm thinking, you know, we're bringing this attitude to the team, right? We, the, the, this sort of experience, right? And then you go to training a couple of times and you say, oh no, it's not MLS Cup. <laughs> Hopefully we can make the playoffs. And that didn't work either. That worked so well that Chivas USA is no longer with us. You gotta blame Chivas USA for huh? cutting your career a little bit short, don't you? Or that experience, maybe. No, I just think I just think it's a, it was a bad experience for everybody who was involved, and I at that point I decided to retire rather than continue to play. Yes. Interesting yes. question here from Ryan. Who are your guys' favorite athletes of all sports? Oh. Uh, oh, good question. Uh, I would say, bear in mind, my f I would have to say Tiger Woods. Mm. Tiger Woods. Oh, okay, because I'm a huge golf fan. I would have yeah. thought you said somebody from your youth or somebody. That's a that's a while back. A while back. So, somebody from my youth. Yeah, like, what do you got, Tiger Woods posters on your wall now? I mean... I don't have any posters on my wall when I was a youth. No. What kind of youth do you think I was? <laughs> now we know about you, eh? Normal, not, I don't know. Uh, did you, Ali, what who, about you? Who, who did you have posters of Herc? Yeah, <laughs> you're sorry. Herc <laughs> 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 uh, uh, Gomez. Um, can I cuss on extra time or... Uh, um, uh, well... Michael Jordan, of course. Mm -hmm. Emmett Smith. Ooh, that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah Emmett Obvious Smith. One. Yeah, that was, that was a big one for me. All right, uh, last question here from Bailey. What pregame music did you guys listen to during your playing days? Any. You, but I you always had charge. music? I just let the lads do it. I didn't, get in, I didn't get involved. I was in the zone or in the bar, one or two. Yeah, that's it. there was, uh, if we go back to Chivas USA for oh, a second. I'd love to know what was pumping through the Chivas USA locker. So, uh, at that point, uh, Black Eyed Peas was very popular with that song that tonight's going to be a good night. Tonight's going to be <laughs> So, we were not very good. And so, but that was that was playing in the, in the locker and I was thinking to myself, well, I'll take an okay night to be honest with you. <laughs> One of the best ones we had, it wasn't music, it was uh, we were playing Fulham in the cup. <laughs> Craven Cottage, oh, and we signed man. this player. I don't know if I've told this story on here, just tell it quickly. We signed a player from Milan, one of the Milan clubs, I can't remember which one. We signed a guy called Toribo West, Ooh. and he was a he was a hugely experienced international footballer. I can't remember the country, it was Cameroon. Na or Nigeria, Nigeria. Nigeria, yeah. But, he, but I tell you what, he was mental. And so we're just about, I'm captain, right? So we're just about to go out at Fulham, and the, gaff, the manager says, whoa, whoa, stop, Craig. So what, so what, Taribo wants to say a few words. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so, Taribo West got everybody in a huddle, and he went in the middle, and we're all got the arms around each other. And then he started making these noises, going like, <laughs> God is with us. <laughs> Give it all that, and my shoulders are shaking, right? That laughing. And I'm thinking, I hope God's with us. 
because we are abysmal. But I'm like, <laughs> I couldn't, honestly, I've never left the dressing room for a game where I was actually still laughing. And it was this speech he gave, God is with us, we are the greatest team. And I'm thinking, well, not. <laughs> no. You didn't inter interrupt him, though. No, because I couldn't stop laughing. And the physio, who I, me and the physio, we were both shaking. It was just crazy. He had a, he was also a pastor or a, or a, a he was a clergyman. You know, like a, what do you call it? Yeah, a minister. A minister. Yeah, yeah. Right. And he used to go back to Milan after the game on this to thing. give his, his well, I'm not religious. Sermon? At all. See, I'm, Sermon, I'm yeah. not religious, I don't bother. Uh, but he used to go back and do it. And then, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't even bother. No, I don't. I, 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 I don't get involved. It's I okay, mean, great. <laughs> it's up to the individual person what they want to do. I personally don't get involved, right? So he goes back to Milan every weekend, and he doesn't come back. <laughs> like we're playing on a Tuesday on a, on a midweek game, and he comes back on a Thursday, and he's like, I'm like, this is just bad. And then he go back and he give his uh, sermon again. <laughs> so some real strange cookies out there. Isn't there? Were you favoured by God that day? Did you win? No, we lost. Which is what I told him. He didn't have to give a speech. <laughs> but it was the noises. <laughs> the clouds were open. <laughs> I'm like... Oh, a minister. A minister. I don't know. A minister. I don't go. Sundays are not... I do other things on a Sunday. Yes, you do, like work. I'll do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here we are. Yeah, here we are. And there we go. I think that's it for extra time. I, I go on Sundays. Hey, just in case anybody's watching, the big guy up top. We are, yeah. God says. Can't be bothered. God's crazy.